What are some immediate red flags about women? Story 1. If she's trying to stir up drama just so the relationship can be fun, I saw this with a former friend. Spicing things up as a couple is all good, but if she's stirring up the pot by letting other guys flirt with her just so that you can play jealous boyfriend so you can rescue her from a situation she started, as if it's some movie or something, stay away from her. I had a female friend who knew I had a crush on her. One time she came to me complaining about a guy catcalling her. When I confronted him, he denied everything and she got angry calling me jealous. Women don't need your protection, etc. I felt sad and cut contact but became friends again after she started trying to talk to me after a fake apology. She repeated the complaint again after a few weeks and this time I didn't confront the guy so she got angry at me for not confronting the catcaller, calling me weak and a coward, etc. I put up with it like a doormat until I started losing my sanity. Never again. My former best friend did this a few years ago to her online boyfriend, her first. He got very upset when she would joke about about stuff like that. Then he cheated on her and when they broke up, she got mad at me for saying I didn't think he was good for her in the beginning. Turned out to be a toxic friendship I had for like 12 years. Trying to create drama in your own relationship has to be an instant breakup. Story 2. When she constantly traps you in difficult situations, like asking if she or her friend is prettier, stuff like that. Sometimes they're just looking to stir trouble and there's no right answer. Just run, man. Just refuse to answer. I've been with my girlfriend for nine years and I've never once admitted to finding another woman attractive. She knows I do. I know I do. But as I always tell her, what good can possibly come from me telling you? Just to clarify, the issue only comes up like once every couple of years and it's never an argument. She'll basically ask and then just point doubt that I'm weird when I refuse to answer. I'll agree and we go back to talking about something else. It's not a toxic relationship as some people are suggesting. My best friend's girlfriend does this all the time, even when my girlfriend and I hang out with him and her. She will literally ask these exact questions and then even goes as far as asking me if he's ever cheated on her when he leaves the room. She's incredibly insecure about herself and it shows on so many levels. My other buddy and I always bring this up to him and he's well aware of it. He can't exactly leave the relationship since they now have a child together. I feel so bad for him. It seems like such an exhausting relationship to be in. This just makes me so uncomfortable and unfortunately, that's the goal. Story 3. Women who follow rules for dating. I have a friend who follows rules from Sex in the City. If she's dating someone, they have to move in together at the six month mark, be engaged for one year, etc. It always ends in disaster and she's so focused on meeting those goals without paying attention to how her partner feels about any of it. I did that. I googled when to say I love you. I felt it earlier, so did he, but I didn't want to mess it up and he was shy about saying it because he never had before and then we just both waited until one night we had one and coaxed it out of each other, so it ended well. It was both our first real relationships, so we followed rules and what other people said rather than our intuition, and sadly our environment was very toxic. I've been dating for several years, mostly from dating sites. Rules always come out from women. We use the message feature to communicate. When do you go to regular email? After five exchanges? Three? I don't like to give my email out, so call me. Or try to coordinate a date through the message feature. Nightmare. Then get the email. How how long till we talk on the phone? How many phone calls until we actually go out? The real problem is that most women have a set of rules in their head about these things and they think they're universal, that everybody knows these things and why don't I? I personally blame Cosmo for starting all of this decades ago. Story 4 if you walk away feeling depleted after spending time with her. This is so true. Near the end of our relationship, I absolutely dreaded spending time with my ex because it was just mentally exhausting. Because she would either have a massive attitude over nothing or look for reasons to fight with me. Like the time I grabbed the non-seedless grapes, which was cause for her to grab the bag out of the cart while rolling her eyes saying, guess I'll go get the right ones, seeing as I'm the only one who can freaking read. I used to purposefully do groceries at 10 p.m. when she was on night shift. So that she wouldn't come with me. After we broke up, I realized just how messed up that was, but at the time, it was just normal and a fact of life. In 2006, I dated a girl who was in town on a work contract. She was attractive, we got along well enough in the beginning, and my family absolutely loved her, but it took me a while to realize how controlling and manipulative she was. The relationship did not end well, and she left town when her work contract was up. A couple years later, I was going through photos from that time, and I could see how exhausted I looked in 
every photo that I was with her. Like I hadn't slept in days, but I was still smiling. The silver lining is that the experience helped me learn a lot about myself and know the signs to look out for in the future. Relationships can get super exhausting at times, usually around the time they need to end. Story 5. If she puts you down around others as a joke, shows total disrespect and the need to look good at the expense of hurting others. I mean, this is more of a yellow flag. If they do it once and you tell them it hurts your feelings and they never do it again, problem solved. Some people genuinely are not good at reading the room and saying something stupid. Also, many couples will tease each other and forget where the line is between funny and hurtful. They shouldn't be blacklisted as a terrible partner because of one comment. We all make mistakes and say hurtful things sometimes. but. But if it is a repeated pattern of behavior, yes, I 100% agree. My ex did this to me a lot, always taking little jabs at me in front of a group of our friends. Anytime I tried to make a joke, she would be like, that was stupid. Or when I'd say something interesting, she would say something like, okay, weirdo. I confronted her about it after I had had enough because it was so exhausting. Long story short, she broke up with me and dating someone else in that friend group. So yeah, I'd say this red flag is valid and maybe a sign of someone who is trying to impress someone else else in that group. That's just rude behavior in general. Story 6. Laying on a guilt trip if you're going out with your friends and she's not invited. Everyone needs time apart to hang out with other people. I used to be like this because I was very insecure at the time. It made my relationship very toxic. He couldn't hang out with anyone without me being jealous. I got over it when I started dating a new dude. We had honesty and trust from the start, so I have no problem with him hanging out with friends or going on a guy's trip, and I have no problem with him having female friends. No jealousy feels amazing. My girlfriend's last partner was like this a lot. She constantly asks if it's okay for her to leave to go do something else or spend time with her family or friends whenever we are talking over the phone. She always says she's afraid I'll be upset, so my go-to response has been, I will never get mad at you for living your life. I may be a part of your life, but that doesn't mean I have a right to take over the other parts of your life too. Every good couple should have no problem spending time apart as well. Story 7 the ones that play games like, I don't want anything for Valentine's Day, gets nothing on Valentine's Day, ugh, why didn't my boyfriend buy something for me, and then get really angry. Just be honest, don't play games like a teen. See, I'm okay even if it's like a, sorry I thought I'd be okay with it, but I ended up feeling really bummed out, so next year let's do presents, because that's the adult way to handle that situation. And I don't think there's anything wrong with expecting presents for those things, it's the getting mad part that makes it juvenile. This is what I did. I didn't say I don't want anything but he was asking if we should get each other presents and would have felt weird slash entitled if I had just said yes. So I made a sly smiley face and didn't answer. To be fair, I was a teenager. When I got him a nice gift and he didn't get me anything, it was really hurtful. Presents are something that should really be seriously discussed beforehand in a relationship because some people don't believe in presents. Now my BF feels like he has to fix it by giving me presents every year. Now I feel like the presents are forced, so I told him he doesn't have to get me anything. It's just messy so it's best to have an adult conversation before it gets awkward. Clarity is something so many women miss in relationships. Story 8 Narcissism, not seeing a problem with their mistakes or owning up to them, having anger issues and justifying them. I just ended it completely with the woman I truly, truly love because she displays a lot of narcissistic behaviors and gaslights me when she's meant to make it my fault. Literally have become a shell of my former self, I have realized. It's so hard right now. I keep wanting to run back, but I'm trying to guide myself with my brain, not my heart. Do not run back to her. One of the biggest issues I've noticed is that men don't have anyone to talk talk to when they are on the other side of the situation. I went back to my wife seven years ago. I am now a broken, beaten man who will barely address any issues at home because I would rather just let things go than continuously fight and be torn down and told that everything wrong is my fault, although she doesn't work and barely helps around the house. We have kids now, which makes it that much more complicated. Now I have to live the rest of my life with the regret of going back after I had already cut it off. Get busy with occupying that open, free time that you have. Find hobbies and new things to learn. Join a gym and focus on the things you can do better health-wise. The reason I went back is because I did not know enough about myself, so I buried myself in the fact that I loved her. I realized that you were the one-way street, but in my mind. I believed that she would come around and things would eventually change. No, I sit here typing to you through the pain that I have appointed myself. Don't ignore the signs. Story 9 
If she's always trying to change you, the way to talk, walk, eat, dress, etc., run. Nothing will ever be good enough for her. Promise you that. The right person will make you want to change without it being forced, but they'll love you for you regardless. I consider myself 100 times the person I was when my wife met me, but I made so many positive changes in my life because I wanted to be the best version of myself I could be for us. Not because she forced me to, to be the best version of myself for her. I find our wedding pictures hard to look at at times. Times, as I was 134 pounds heavier, but she always says that I loved you then for you, and I love you now for you. So I guess there's a world of difference between forcing a change and inspiring one. To a degree, I had many frustrations with my ex over her attempts to change me, but her intentions were good. She wanted me to eat healthier and dress nicer. How dare she? But jokes aside, I am eating better even though she's no longer around, and my employer liked the shoes slash pants she chose for me. Unfortunately, circumstances cut our relationship short, so we never really had a blow up about it. I don't know if you are right about never being good enough. She was patient and mostly respectful. There was one time when she refused to go in public with me because I looked homeless, but heh, she's not the first person to make similar statements. Yeah, change can be good sometimes, it just shouldn't be forceful. Story 10 if she tries to make you feel guilty for wanting some alone time or for spending time with friends or family, if she degrades your hobbies or interests to try to dissuade you from taking time to do those things, if she withholds intimate relations as punishment for XYZ, that's not normal or okay. As an aside, I was dating a guy and in the beginning stages, we were setting boundaries. He would want physical affection, hand holding, some other things, and I just didn't feel comfortable with it at that moment. Then at some point, I wanted to be exclusive and he was not willing. I held back on kissing, sex, etc. because I didn't want to experience further heartbreak or hurt. I think there's a big difference between withholding to intentionally hurt another versus withholding to protect yourself. The guy later said he was upset by me pulling back my hand during one of our first dates. He said this months later, but he kept dating me because why? He brought in his upset so much later versus at the time he felt it. It was so stupid. So I wanted to share that as whenever I see comments about withholding affection, sometimes it's a very simple and pure reason for not being sexually or physically expressive, and that's an important part of healthy relationships, setting boundaries and being respectful about it. So my old neighbor was venting to me about his girlfriend for doing something similar. He said that every time he would bring up how she would cuddle with her adult brother and hold his hand in public would make him feel awkward and uncomfortable. She would cry and make him feel bad. The conversation would end there. The brother would also get extremely jealous. When they cuddle, it would look like they were a couple, her hand on his shoulder and her legs over his legs, her head resting on his lap, spooning on the couch. I told him that wasn't normal sibling relationship behavior. She would also make him feel bad for being tired after he would drive two and a half hours to see her after work on the weekends. He didn't listen, and he's now engaged to her. Story 11 if they treat you like a pet whose only job is to make her happy, buy her things and give her attention, while she does the bare minimum in return. If she holds you under a scrutinous gaze, looking for everything you do wrong. Or if she plays stupid games instead of communicating. Or basically if she does half the stuff you see on TikTok. I once saw a TikTok about how a girl and her friends would pretend to forget her phone so she could secretly record what boys were saying about them. And no one in the thousands of comments thought to reprimand her. They all thought it was brilliant, but I'm pretty sure that stuff is illegal, not to mention a gross breach of privacy. They constantly act like boys only exist to worship their every step and give them unlimited attention and emotional validation, and they think their boyfriends are supposed to know everything they're thinking and cater to every single one of their insecurities without taking any responsibility for themselves. They ask stupid manipulative questions they don't want to hear the answers to, like would you love me if I were a worm, or who's your dream girl, and get mad if boys give them a wrong answer. They think that boys, once they start dating a girl, she should be their dream girl, and they should lose any and all attraction to any other girl ever, despite being literal teenage boys. While most of them probably turn around and go on about how much they want to be with Harry Styles or Timothy Charlemagne or whoever, mind you, it's like they want boyfriend bots with no interests outside of them. And I deleted TikTok because I was sick and tired of seeing the way they treat and think of boys. I tried to fill my For You page with guinea pigs and dogs and stuff, but it didn't work. Let's start teaching our girls to treat boys with respect too, because from what I've seen, God knows they need to. There used to be a trend, which thankfully ended about a month ago, where somebody's girlfriend would ask their boyfriend to go get a drink from Starbucks, or some sort of food or drink. When the boyfriend brought it home, the girl would then say, oh, thanks, but I asked for a different flavor. 
and if the boyfriend didn't drive a whole 30 minutes back to Starbucks and spend even more money, then that relationship is toxic. Which I agree with, because if the girlfriend is that rude and condescending about a drink and uses her boyfriend as a slave, it is toxic. TikTok relationship advice is probably one of the worst things to happen to the internet. Story 12. Women who put down other women. If she is always insulting or being nasty about other women to you, that's a red flag. It shows a lack of self-esteem and jealousy issues. Yup, every girlfriend my best guy friend had that had a problem with my existence wound up cheating on him. The ones who didn't mind him talking to me didn't always work out, but at least they didn't cheat. His fiance is really nice. I like her for him. I have a really good female friend whom I've known since second grade. Almost all of my exes had a huge problem with me having her as such a close friend. We have never been intimate in any way aside from once when we tried to kiss when we were like 15 to see what happens. It was awkward as hell and we never did it again, lol. When my now wife met her, they hit it off big time and she was eventually one of my wife's bridesmaids at our wedding. When I realized my wife not only did not have a problem with her, but actually liked her, I knew I had found my partner. If she's not gonna support other women, she sure as hell isn't gonna support you. Story 13 making decisions on your behalf without asking, including what you will eat, wear, or do. This is such a toxic trait and it shows up early, and it's often more than just you they will make plans for. Often they will be making plans and decisions for everyone around them. People like this view others as pawns or accessories in their life, and they treat them as such. They will also often get wildly offended and upset when others act on their own agency and don't want to be a part of their plans. It's a huge freaking red flag that often goes right over people's heads. Had someone moved in with me and assumed that because I'm female, I would do this for him so he wouldn't have to think about it. Hell no, that is exhausting to keep on top of for myself, let alone someone else. Had to introduce him to the concept of codependency and shove him towards living more independently. Felt a little bit like being cruel to be kind in the early days, but it paid off. I can understand making decisions alone sometimes, but when it starts overreacting, it's a problem. Story 14. If she always plays the victim to get her way, very manipulative. Jesus, this makes me tear up. So much energy drained on a useless vampire. I kept thinking I wasn't trying hard enough. She had a ton of wonderful redeeming qualities beyond that, so I guess I stuck around for those. But the victim mindset will eat everything away. Learned my lesson the hardest way. Don't cast pearls to swine. I had someone I really loved, and sadly still do, contact me this week after six months of no contact. She texted me letting me know she was lonely and still loved and missed me so much. I took the bait and replied, and in her very next text message, she made it clear she was just contacting me to make sure I know what I did wrong and that I was the reason why everything imploded. I told her I would be happy to discuss both of our perspectives and try to mend the damage, but she was adamant she did nothing wrong. I guess I realized at that point that she was never the good person I thought she was and just had to tell her, I'm sorry, enjoy your life. The hardest thing I've ever had to say, but I think I'm better off having done so. I don't know if I'll ever experience a connection that strong ever again, and that hurts. Just trying to hang in there. Story 15 my ex used to be very cautious of me because I was much larger than her, and I don't blame her, but I got in trouble for accidentally bruising her once. Throughout the next couple of weeks, she wanted to wrestle and stuff and would hit me. I ended up saying, if I can't hit you, you shouldn't be able to hit me. I had to tell her to stop a few times. Ugh. She would also bite me without my consent, actually after denying it. I hated that. I was in a relationship similar to this a while ago. She was barely half my size, so I always had to be cautious every minute we were together. The slightest bump from me would bruise the poor woman and I'd feel absolutely horrible. But she felt that because she was so much smaller than me, it was okay to punch, bite, and hit me with objects, all while shrugging it off afterward while saying that, Oh, you're built like a brick wall. Stop pretending I hurt you. She was right. She barely did any physical damage at all, despite her putting her full strength into whatever she was hitting me with. But I had no desire to be punched and bit and hurt with books or plates or soda cans. It was almost a game to her. She would wail on my head with a book whenever I did something she didn't like, and it didn't matter to her. But I was in a constant state of fear over not wanting to accidentally even bump her elbow because I was so much larger than her. We were together just a touch over two years, and this was the norm. You mentioned being bitten made me shudder. My ex would flip out over something as trivial as the wrong brand of sour cream in the fridge, and then would try as hard as she could to do damage simply because she was tiny and I'm a large, solid guy. The biting was the worst. I hated that more than anything. Physical Physical violence shouldn't be in any relationship regardless of who's doing it. Story 16 
I knew a woman who was bonkers. She expected her boyfriend to read her mind. Yes means no, no means extra fries, and would punish him when he didn't behave accordingly. She was also ridiculously hot, and frequently joked that her boyfriend was out of his league. Before me not being around her anymore, her boyfriend had gone to Starbucks and asked what she wanted. She said she didn't want anything, so he didn't get her anything. According to her, he should have known that, oh, nothing for me meant a large soy vanilla latte with caramel drizzle. As such, she put him on silent treatment for three weeks. They lived together, but she was making him sleep in the guest room as she was only coming out of the bedroom to go to work. What about food, you ask? He was ordering her favorites from DoorDash every night and leaving them outside the bedroom door and picking up the trash when she'd throw it back out the bedroom door. So if she's hot, if she's so freaking hot and everything is mind-blowing, but the trade-off is she has a dream about you cheating, so she intentionally breaks your Xbox and won't tell you why? Run. Her boyfriend probably felt like she was the most attractive person he could ever get. That's why he put up with the bull. I've seen that with a few of my insecure male friends, and the women they chose to be with, constantly emasculating them. Pretty privilege is real, folks. Story 17 slowly removing friends and family while making it seem as if it's in your best interests, also not wanting to admit faults or have excuses for their behaviors. A major red flag is that you might be dealing with narcissism. Exaggerated self-importance and excessive admiration for themselves might seem like positive aspects to have, but are really major red flags. If it starts feeling like your relationship revolves around their happiness, run. Worth noting here, there is a flip side to narcissism, which I've seen psychologists writing on more recently recently that applied to my ex-wife. There is the opposite where they hate themselves and everything about themselves, but it's still a sort of form of self-obsession and still insidious, especially if you're of a personality type like mine and predisposed to trying to save people. Something I have at this point definitely grown out of. Guilty as charged. Everything was my fault. I was always taking blame and responsibility, projecting my fears, asking partners nonstop if I was a bad person, etc. One day, my ex just looked at me and said, stop, just stop. Every time you assume you're the problem behind my issues, you're robbing me of the opportunity to speak up and tell you when there is an actual issue. I've tried really hard ever since to not be that person. It really does seep and take over everything in exactly the same way grandiose narcissism does. Story 18. She's always the victim in her stories, never the villain or the one who messed something up happened with my last ex. She was always talking smack about her other ex-boyfriends, ex-friends, her parents, people at work. I broke up with her because the relationship wasn't working. She was dependent, and I could barely see my family and friends, among other things. She pleaded with me to stay, telling me that she loved me, and that I was the most wonderful thing I'd ever happened to her, and stuff like that. I kept adamant about my decision. Fast forward one month, guess who's a monster now? My ex never took responsibility for anything bad happening in our lives, and every Everything was someone else's fault or bad luck. I think people who are like this were raised to feel this way and it's hard to change. That's the way they were brought up to see the world and it really doesn't become a huge problem until they enter the real world. This one gets me. People just aren't ready to admit they're wrong sometimes. Story 19. Hitting you. I don't care if you're a big guy and she's much smaller than you. No one, male, female, non-binary, gender fluid, I don't care. No one should lay hands on you. If she hits you once, she'll do it again. Get out and never look back. When we were dating, my now ex-wife hauled off and kicked me in the butt, unprovoked, right in front of her mom, in Whole Foods. She was in a week of cold shouldering me and that was the culmination. Somehow, I ignored that. Seven years later, she took a swing at me while I was holding our infant daughter. I turned in time and it connected with my shoulder instead of one of our faces. We're divorced and everyone's much safer now. Oh damn, a friend of my sister was like that. She got together with a medic who was in the Dutch army and he had been recalled after two times being sent to Afghanistan. So he goes back there, but before he leaves, he makes sure that his girlfriend would be the one who'd receive everything if something would happen to him. They literally knew each other for two months, but he really, really liked her. So he wanted to show her how much he really was as a sweet guy for real. Anyways, he goes and the first thing this woman does after he left for about a month, she cheats on him with the sad excuse that she feels lonely. A few months later, he returns with a lot of stacked up emotional scars and trauma. Of course, he eventually found out that she had cheated on him and I think this was the turning point where stuff went bad. I don't know the details, but I heard from my sister that she basically started crapping on him because he had heavy PTSD and started hitting him for it. She guilt tripped him hard, made everything look 
like it was his fault and kept on abusing him mentally and physically. She was also leeching off of him financially since he got an honorary discharge and got paid pretty well for his services. This kept going on for months. Eventually, he collected the courage to leave the woman finally, but it took him a long time to do that. My sister also told her she was a heartless witch and broke off the friendship. I would do the same. I'd even slap her in the face. Met the guy at my sister's birthday party and my god, he was just one of the sweetest guys I've ever met. Story 20 if a woman takes pride in manipulation, run. I had a friend who would brag to me about being able to control people and situations with ease. She was a nightmare, never admitted to anything she did wrong, thought she was better than everyone, and whenever she was called out on any of the behavior, she would turn around and blame it on my mental health. Trauma, wah, pity, me, I'm the victim. Like no one ever saw through her bullcrap as her trying to manipulate the situation. Are you friends with my sister? This is all I ever get from her, and I end up just telling her, she's a monster. Like, I'm at the point where I've said, you realize nice people don't go around thinking how they can con people, right? She thinks she's the nice one who's always getting stepped on, then flaunts how she's able to manipulate men out of their wallets. Like another comment here, I decided not to be friends with a BFF of mine. We knew each other for 17 years, and only in the past year have I realized how perfectly she manipulates everyone. Her family, friends, co-workers, everyone. And she admitted to me she does this, and I knew, but it never crossed my mind to leave the friendship after so many years together. But no one sees it, and everyone thinks she's the greatest and nicest person ever and that she's their best friend. She isn't. She doesn't like 90% of the people she hangs out with, but will fake to be their BFF in a second. Disgusting. If they're bragging about manipulating, they're probably gonna do it to you too. Story 21 Alcoholism is a huge red flag as you get older. We are in our 30s. She drinks herself to sleep three out of four nights a week. It's because she can't cope with her job or she's just having fun or some other excuse. What's worse is that she's a mean drunk. This means personality bleeds through when she gets depressed or starts having fun and lets her guard down. She's burned multiple bridges with people I value and I find myself doing damage control at least twice a week. It's exhausting. I'm so tired of the situation. Had my first experience with this in my last relationship. It was traumatizing. All the reasons for drinking were the same as you mentioned, and when it was brought up, it was, let's take a break from drinking. But then, there was always a reason to not stick to it. She wasn't mean, but she passed out almost every night. Bout of an intimacy killer, which led to more problems. It was freaking exhausting. I got roped into drinking most of the time because she didn't want to drink alone. Probably drank more in the two years with her than the ten years prior. This one's a bit dark, but it hits the nail on the head. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story that you're okay sharing with us, please leave it in the comments below. And everyone, please remember to be respectful. If you enjoyed this video and these stories, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel or click one of the ones on the screen after the video's over. Thanks again and see you next time!